guests and dignitaries. Welcome to Nostos Division's Evaluation and Humor Speech Contest.
on the stage tonight. And we all know that there's a contest. It takes a lot of energy, a lot of effort, and a lot of planning to go and make this a success that it's going to be. To have that event be the magnitude that we expected. And so that would be the reward. I do not thank the contestants, the functionaries, the contest chair, particularly Ivory for helping to secure the location. And finally, and most importantly, you. Your presence. Your willingness to sacrifice a Friday night. It's your willingness and your commitment to Toastmasters that makes this organization the absolute best. So I want to thank you guys for making this a priority. Eric Hattenauer. 
Contestant number five, Nick Valentino. Number five, Nick Valentino. One of those. Contestant number six, Paul Lockwood. Contestant number six, Paul Lockwood. Those are our evaluation contestants. But they have nothing to evaluate yet. We need a speaker. And we have a speaker. Our speaker tonight will be Zyalon Lee. Postmaster, coach, postmaster. Postmaster, coach, master, Zai Ahog Lee. Level 1. 
the loser perceiving himself as a victim. His fate is totally in the hands of the judges. All contestants have some quality he will never reach. So his emotion is shame and hopeless. His core action is way down high. Level two, the loser still in the box, but he perceives himself as a fighter. Everything's wrong. The judges are unfair. The winners aren't that good. So his core emotion is anger. His core action is to fight to prove his worth. He can be very successful, but often he's driven by, by his uh, stress and mental emotions. Level three, the loser is on top of the box. He perceives his, himself as the ultimate judge of the contest. <laughs> Trophy isn't the only thing to prove his worth. There's nobody to blame on. So his core emotion is disappointment and forgiveness. His core action is to cope with his unpleasant feelings. In the meantime, reach for self accident via contest. Mm -hmm. Level four, a loser is above the box. He perceives himself as a gamer. So he cares less about his loss. He cares more about how well his speech has served as a stepping stone, paving other people's own path. So his core emotion is fulfillment and compassion. His core <coughs> action is to serve the contest. Level five, the box is, is flat. So the loser no longer perceives lose or loss as good or bad but as an opportunity to learn. So his core emotion is peace. Core action is to seek opportunity via contest. Level six, a loser perceives a contest as a creative process to gain wisdom. The loss doesn't exist in this world. When the knowledge, emotion, experience all transcended to his wisdom. What can he lose? When all things are all connected to a common human experience, by his unique expression, we are his inspiration and personality. What can we judge? So his core emotion is joy. His core action is to get wisdom we are content. Number seven, the box doesn't exist. He views the contest it's a man-made game for spiritual beings to, to experience the human life. His core action is love. His core emotion is love. Or any emotion he chooses to experience. If he wants to taste mm -hmm. the pain of the loser, he can <coughs> lift him down to a lower level. The difference is that he is the cause, not the fact. The core action is to enjoy every game. Tonight's game has begun. Be aware which level you are playing. Because most likely how you play this game is how you have been played the game of life. You will remember you have seven more levels to choose from. Be the cause of the game. Enjoy.
First, I would say is your voice inflection. Your voice seemed to kind of, it moved a little bit, but didn't kind of go up and down. And I would have liked to have seen it when you were doing the points. For example, number two, when we're talking about anger and fight, you could have brought your voice up a little bit and talked about anger and fight. Why didn't or then when you went to number five, when you were talking about peace and serenity and thinking opportunity. Those are the points uh, during those seven that you have a wide range because you're talking about seven different things. So there you can actually have your voice go up and down a lot more on those points. Um, the second point that I think you can use a little bit of improvement on is your movement. You came out here again and you had good eye contact with everyone. Then you started coming over here and talking, and then you turned around and came over here and started talking, and then you stopped and then you kind of came over here. And I would have liked to have seen you come up here and say your opening, come over here, give more eye contact like you did, spend a moment or two here longer. Then come back to the center, speak to everyone here, then walk over to this side and speak to everyone here. I think if you did that, it would have been a bit more consistent and would have hit everyone at the same time. But you were kind of a little bit swaying back and forth. Finally, I just want to say overall, I truly enjoyed your speech and I can't wait to hear you speak again. Thank you very much. Contestant number two, Harsh Sharma. Contestant number two, Harsh Sharma. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and our guests. Wonderful speech. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I like about your speech is you educated us, you inspired us, and you entertained us. The way you educated us is you took a very deep subject. You took a subject about human nature, perception. Speakers don't usually speak about these things. They're lost. You educated us how a person's perception changes himself, his surroundings, his actions. And a good point. Emotion brings action. Emotion drives action. And another quote that you made good use of is the cause, don't be the cause, be don't be the effect, be the cause. Always. How you entertained us. You made good use of humor, bipolar, <laughs> tripolar, and it was great. You didn't overuse it, 
and came when it was least expected. Because you were trying to reveal this deep mystery of box and the human and how you see that human from up top, the sky, and things like that. So very entertaining in that aspect. And you inspired us by giving you a personal touch. You told your story that you lost the contest last week. So this topic was definitely close to you. You motivated everyone. You told them, don't be stuck in just two levels of your part. Expand yourself behind your horizons. Change your perception. Don't think how people perceive you. Believe in yourself. That was the message I got from the speech. A very, very well dropped speech. And you used all the good techniques of speech. You, have, you, you made good use of flow. You had good eye contact. Your eyes traveled all through the room. And you made good gestures with the ball, with the prop. Perfect use of prop. However, there are a couple of things that I thought were lack or you could improve in your next speech. One was when you try to make a point and you emphasize on a point on a very deep subject, take a pause and a long pause. Make the audience think. You explain the same points very well. However, you then emphasize on one particular point or a thought. You gave a good quotation, which is very good. Thank you. Contestant number three, <coughs> Pete Russell. Contestant number three, Pete Russell.
It's all in your own perception of what you can do with it. That is the core of Toastmasters. Changing your perception. I thought she had excellent vocal variety. She laughed when it was funny. She frowned when it was sad. She shrugged her shoulders from body gestures. She had props up high so you can see them from the back of the room. She had good eye contact. I stayed in the back. She looked right at me on more than one occasion. <laughs> <laughs> she also had good command of the stage. She didn't stand here. She didn't pace the stage, dissipating energy. She had good command of the stage. She went from one side to the other the whole time, keeping eye contact and her focus. I thought that was a marvelous job. <clears throat> and then I also thought that, excuse me for a minute, I also thought that when you were talking about some things, you could have exaggerated your body language. Mm -hmm. And the first example was the loser. I had a picture of Charlie Brown. Maybe you could have had a metaphor. Oh, I lost again. I thought when you talked about the fighter, I didn't know what to do. I thought, fighter? And I'm looking at John and I'm thinking, Asian Tiger Brown? <laughs> I thought you could have really brought a couple of those things to life with a little bit more animation to really drive home your point. All in all, what I really like about your speech is the best learning experience is failure. You get more from learning experiences from studying your failures than you do your successes. And that's what Toastmasters helps you achieve with a supportive environment. Thank you, ladies. Contestant number four.
From there, you got right to the point. You told us what your thesis was. Be the cause, not the fact of life. Be the cause, not the fact of life. From there, you drew us in, you gave us a little bit of background about what you were talking about, perception versus reality, creating emotions that lead to our actions. And from there, then you broke it down. You told us that you had seven different perspectives, perspectives from a loser. And so that helped us to realize, okay, now you told us a little bit of what we're looking at, now you broke it down into each seven perspectives, and you used consistency there, talking about, all right, where are you in relation to the box? You had a visual, you helped us with providing an idea of where that person or which each different set of loser, where were they in relation to the box? So you helped create an idea in our mind. And from there, you broke it down again, repeating, bringing us in, calling us to action, to be the cause, not the fact of life. And you, by standing here tonight, you are the cause, not the fact of life, by being a part of this competition. So I want to first mention a couple things you did really well. A couple things. One, connection. Connection with the audience and connection to yourself, between the audience and, and us. We really understood from the beginning, you were a loser. You didn't win the competition, although in your head it didn't matter. You still won. You were the cause. You were number seven. The box did not exist. And the second part was the repetition. You did a great job of repeating over and over what the purpose of your speech was. Be the cause, not the fact of life. Then the next one was, in addition to that, was your level of repetition with relation to the box, your consistency. For every level, there was the name, where were you in relation to the box? What was your emotion? And what was their action? So now let's talk about what you can improve on. Because you really have a great foundation to start on. A couple things that I would look at for next time. One of them would be having a guide, helping us carry us along. There was a lot of information. You did a great job of keeping everything in there. However, there were times where I wish I would have seen maybe a visual, something to help me keep and follow along. There was so much information I was trying to put down that I wish perhaps next time providing a visual for us to see the breakdown and organization of your speech. And the second one was pace to help maybe slow down a little bit. You had a lot of information to get in there. Slow down and help us to follow. Great job tonight, and I look forward to hearing another speech from you. Mr. Coach. Contestant number five.
you had a good sense of humor, you even had the confidence to kind of poke fun at yourself, which I think is the ultimate sign of confidence. You attempted to use structure. You had seven points, and you wanted us to follow along. And your speech was informational, but you also had a call to action, and you, you used a lot of emotion to express it. But in the spirit of Toastmasters, I, I want to give you some possible areas of improvement. You know, a lot of people think public speaking is about information. And it's not, because if it was, Einstein would have been the greatest public speak speaker ever. But he wasn't, because public speaking is about connection. And there were times in your speech where it was so much information that I became a little confused. And here's what I mean. For your introduction, I thought the transitions from your introduction to your body to your conclusions could have been a little better. We kind of went right into the introduction, and then we went right into the body, and then there was a quick closing. A little bit more structure in the beginning. In this speech, I plan to do this. Point one, point two, point three. And at the end of conclusion, in this speech, I have shown you. The other thing is you had seven steps, which I thought were good. But I think you're trying to get people to have a call to action. And I'm not sure seven points requires that. It may. But do you want me to remember step three or step four? Or do you want me more to evaluate myself? And I, I want you to, when you throw out, have you ever been a victim, let it pause in the room. Because we went quickly from step to step to step. But you want to make sure your information lands and people remember it. And the last point is people like speeches, but people love stories. Where is your story in this? When were you a victim? When were you a fighter? When did you think outside the box? Because information is great, but in the end, people will remember other people. And I think if we hear a little bit more of you, then people will take the information that you gave us, and they'll run with it, and they'll make changes, which is, I think is what you wanted to do. But other than that, I thought it was a great speech, very encouraging, and I look forward to your next one. Thank you. Contestant number six, Paul Lockwood. Contestant number six, Paul Lockwood. Seven different perspectives immediately. 
So I was on the edge of my seat. What are those different perspectives? What, if, if I lose tonight... <laughs>
Mr. Toastmaster, we have all the ballots. Yeah, I watch some good movies like 
past exam would say that for me, since I'm young, is a gladiator and. Uh, <laughs>
not the same. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Yes. 
This is on the fall conference. And this is actually the second edition, so I have plenty here, but I'll put that up there. Now, if you had all said yes, I could have said that. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I guess I'm going to have to talk. I don't like to do that. Anyway, fall conference, November 9th, a one day conference. We've got an action packed all day long. Willowbrook Inn. This used to be the Willowbrook Holiday Inn. Alright, so first off, we have our world champion from 2002, Dwayne Smith. He's going to be there. <coughs> Haven't heard him before, but I'm looking forward to it. He's going to be talking at breakfast and lunch and dinner. Mm. We start out the morning at 7 a.m. Why not? It's Saturday. What else do you have to do? <laughs> <laughs> How many people in this room have earned an educational award since April 20th? Okay. okay, you have to be there at 7 free, hot breakfast. How can you miss that? 8 a.m. banner parade. So every club that has a new banner, get together with a few of your members, get a 15 seconds get together. You're used to five to seven minutes. 15 seconds. What does the winner get? Free registration. Free registration for the spring conference. How can you beat that? 9 a.m. The evaluation contest. So the winner tonight will be one of the eight. Nine o'clock in the morning. You better get there at seven, have a couple hours, kind of warm up and wake up, right? <laughs> After the evaluation contest, we have the business meeting. Some of us have to go. Some of us want to go. But for those of you who would rather maybe be doing something else, we have two educational sessions back to back. The first one is Improve with Improv with Ellen Schneer. Help you be a better speaker. And right after that, our world champion, the journey to the world champion. Thank you. 